Why are Maseratis powered by Ferrari engines? How did that relationship even come about? And why is Ferrari said that they're going to no longer be supplying Maserati with engines in the very near future? Today we're going to be talking about all of that and more in this video. But before we get too deep into it, I want to make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton. Our story begins in 1997 and it actually features Ferrari, Maserati and Fiat because in the late 90s Fiat owned both Maserati and Ferrari. In July of 1997 in a very controversial move Fiat decided to sell 50% of its stake in Maserati to Ferrari. Now most notably at the time Maserati and Ferrari were rivals and what ended up happening three years later in 1999 Ferrari actually took complete control over Maserati and the result was that Maserati became its sort of luxury division. So Ferrari was making the sports cars and Maserati was supposed to make the luxury cars. As a result of essentially being owned by the same company, Ferrari didn't want to develop two separate engines for the brands. That's not exactly cost effective. So instead of doing that, they decided to develop one engine that would fit in both Ferrari models and Maserati models. In 2001, the world got to see the very first Ferrari-powered Maserati model with the Maserati Coupe and then subsequently the Maserati Spider. Now the engine in question is a 4.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 developing 385 horsepower and 333 pound-feet of torque. Since the engine was developed by Ferrari in-house, it's actually dubbed the Ferrari F136 engine. And it's featured in Maserati models since 2001 all the way to 2019. Meaning this is an 18 year old engine that has received a couple of updates throughout its years but it remains largely unchanged. While the engine made its initial debut in a Maserati, it didn't actually reach a Ferrari car until 2004 with the Ferrari F430. Like many of the Maserati models, it was tweaked slightly and it actually lived on all the way until 2015 where it was placed in the back of the Ferrari 458 Speciale Aperta. So let's double back to that original Ferrari powered Maserati because there's a bunch of important information there. For starters, the engine was only offered with two transmission options. The first was a six-speed manual and the second was a six-speed automated manual. In short, the automated manual is essentially what the name suggests. It is a manual transmission with an electric controller that basically does the shifting for you. So while it is technically a manual, the computer is doing all the shifting, the clutch work and everything. Now these transmissions were not exactly known for the reliability and as a result they haven't aged all that well. Now in 2004 the Grand Sport came along and was a more powerful, more sporty version of that original Grand Coupe. And Unfortunately for buyers, it only featured the automated manual. The six-speed manual was nowhere to be found. Now, that was the same year the Ferrari introduced the F430. Now, most notably, the Grand Sport received updates which bumped up the horsepower figure up to 395 horsepower. So it gained about a 10 horsepower upgrade. In the Ferrari, however, the engine was bumped up to almost an extra 100 horsepower for a total output of 483 horsepower. As a result, Maserati was getting a severely tuned down version of the engine while Ferrari was getting the singing, high revving V8 that it's always meant to be. In reliability terms, the Ferraris were actually also more reliable than their corresponding Maseratis. Not only in the engine department, but also in terms of electronics. Which meant that even though you spent a ton of money in your brand new Ferrari powered Maserati, it depreciated at an alarming pace. But let's step away from sports cars for a second because those don't exactly make the big bucks. And in 2003, the F136 engine actually found its way to the Maserati Quattroporte, which, as the name suggests, is the brand's four-door sedan. Now, contrary to what you'd expect, Maserati didn't actually give the Quattroporte a standard automatic transmission. Instead, it got the semi-automated manual from the Grand Coupe. And the result is that that transmission is not exactly great for around town driving. Now, thankfully, later years of the Maserati Quattroporte got a ZF-derived automatic transmission, which made the engine not only more reliable, but infinitely more drivable. No Maserati-Ferrari comparison is complete without talking about the Ferrari Enzo, which essentially was, is one of the hypercar greats with its naturally aspirated V12 engine. 
Now, subsequently, we got the Maserati MC12, which featured, you guessed it, the same V12 engine and overall architecture. Although, they were stylistically almost entirely different. Now, while Ferrari claims that 399 Enzos were produced, many have debated that there are a couple extra ones floating around. In the case of the Maserati, however, we know that there are just 50 MC12s out there ever made. Now, we know that the MC12 was built specifically as a homologation for the FIA GT Championship. What's going on here is essentially if a manufacturer wants to race a certain model of a car, they have to produce a certain amount of road cars. In this case, Maserati had to produce at least 25 road-going MC12s. In actuality, they produced about 50. And actually, the MC12 got a hardcore version with the MC12 Corsa later on in life, which actually went on to be quite successful in racing. Now, a major side note and perhaps a controversial take is that, for me personally, I think the MC12 looks much better than the Enzo. Now, while the Enzo has that sort of F1 style nose, the MC12 looks like a much more cohesive design. And personally, if I had a choice between one or the other, I'd go with the Maserati. So as mentioned earlier, that faithful 4.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 went to live on in Maserati models up until 2019. So let's flash forward slightly to 2013 because that's when the next major Ferrari Maserati engine update happened with the Ferrari F154 engine. Now, unlike the F136 we covered earlier, this F154 actually comes in various configurations. For example, it's offered as both a V8 and a V6 with two turbochargers. Side note, this V6 configuration is actually what you get in the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio and the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Now, the engine made its debut in the 2013 Maserati Quattroporte GTS. And unlike the first time around, it actually didn't take too long for the engine to make its way into the Ferrari California T as a twin turbo V8. Now, like the first time around, Maserati got the short end of the stick once again, because in the Quattroporte, the engine only developed 523 horsepower, while in the California T, it developed 552 horsepower. Which actually, if you think about it, makes sense. Now, this is completely speculation, but why would you like to give a somewhat competing brand the same amount of power as your Ferrari? If you're gonna differentiate your product, you can't just have a competitor with the same amount of juice. So it would make complete sense why Ferrari would give all the necessary power to their models and you know skimp a little bit on Maserati, they don't need all of that. Plus, it keeps the overall prestige of the Ferrari brand. Most importantly for Maserati in 2018, the F154 engine actually made its way to the company's SUV, the Levante, in the form of the Levante GTS. Now, while the Levante is already seen as a sort of saving grace for the brand, the GTS model offered a Ferrari powered SUV that Ferrari doesn't actually offer. Now, rumors currently suggest that Ferrari is undergoing development of its new SUV, and chances are that it'll either feature this engine, a hybrid engine, or perhaps even a fully electric powertrain. Now, none of that is confirmed, all of it is speculation, but it's certainly a possibility. Above all else, the Levante proved that a Ferrari-powered SUV definitely works. The most powerful version is the Levante Trofeo, which produces a total of 572 horsepower, an insane figure when you consider that it's in a body of an SUV. And actually, the Levante Trofeo is one of the world's fastest SUVs with a top speed of over 180 miles an hour. Now, if everything is so great, why did Ferrari decide to stop supplying engines to Maserati? It's simple, sales. So Ferrari not only makes cars, it actually supplies engines to other brands such as Maserati. Now revenue from its engine division was severely down in 2019. And an article by Road and Track actually says that the CEO of Ferrari decided that, well, there's not a lot of money to be made with Maserati. And in fact, we're gonna to decide to pull the plug. Now, although no official timeline has been determined yet, it'll likely happen either in 2021 or in 2022. Which leads us with a very important question. Will Maserati build their own engines? Will a new manufacturer step in? All of that remains to be seen, but we wanna know what you think in the comment section down below. If you've made it this far in the video, I wanna thank you so much for watching. I wanna make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out immensely, and I will see you again very soon. Take care.